Four things the angels do in heaven. Number one, they serve God. They serve God. Psalms 103.20, Revelations 22.9. The psalmists let us know that the angels serve the Lord. Psalms 103.20, Bless the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his commandments, obeying the voice of his word. Through the course of history, people have repeatedly fallen into the trap of worshipping angels rather than God. When John makes the error of worshipping an angel, the angel lets him know the truth. Revelation 22, 8-9, Amplified Bible I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. But he said to me, I am a fellow servant of God, and your brothers the prophets, and with those who heed my name, are contained in the words of this book, worship. As before in Revelation 19:10, John was overwhelmed and bound before an angel to worship the Lord. In the same way, the angel of my God, the Lord, worshiped. And when he again brings the firstborn highest ranking son into the world, he says, and all the angels of God are to worship him. It is striking that even someone who had received all these visions may go astray. Supernatural visions and revelations do not mean that someone is correct in their doctrine, teaching, or practice. We need to look again at Hebrews 1.14 and take special notice of the term ministering niv, or even better, Divine Service, NRSV. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? In both translations, the word refers to priestly service in God's temple. He knew his audience was familiar with the work of temple priests. By pushing to the end of the verse, we see that they are sent by God as part of our redemption. These worshipping spirits are sent by God to help in our redemption so we can join them in worshipping the God of redemption. Number 2. They attend to God and they take their missions in heaven. Angel Gabriel, delivering good news to Zechariah in the New Testament, said he was in the very presence of God. Luke 1.19, Amplified Bible the angel replied and said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand and minister in the very presence of God, and I have been sent by him to speak to you and to bring you this good news. Zechariah doubts the efficacy of angel Gabriel's news, and the angel stops his mouth by asserting his authority. Angels have sometimes refused to tell their names, as to Manoah and his wife. But his angel readily saith, I am Gabriel which signifies the power of God, or the mighty one of God, intimating that the God who bade him say this would be able to make it good. He is Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, an immediate attendant upon the throne of God. Job 1.6 Now there was a day when the sons of God, angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan, adversary, accuser, also came among them. This reveals the scene in heaven, unseen to Job and the others on earth, but absolutely real nonetheless. The story of Job can really only be properly understood by taking into account what happened in heaven and by having more than an earthly perspective. We read, When the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, the phrase sons of God is used in the Old Testament to describe angelic beings. Job 38, 7, Amplified Bible. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God, angels, shouted for joy. Genesis 6, 1 to 4. Now it happened when men began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, 
For the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and desirable, and they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose and desired. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive and remain with man forever, because he is indeed flesh, sinful, corrupt, given over to sensual appetites. Nevertheless, his days shall yet be a hundred and twenty years. There were Nephilim, men of stature, notorious men, on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God lived with the daughters of men, and they gave birth to their children, these were the mighty men who were of old men of renown, great reputation and fame. Number 3. Angels are accompanying us to heaven. Believers who die will be escorted safely into heaven by the angels, according to the Bible. Two very different men were described by Jesus in one of his parables. There was a rich man who lived only for himself and ignored both God and others. This wealthy man had access to everything good in life. Lazarus, on the other hand, was not only poor but also covered in sores. He yearned to eat the crumbs that had fallen from the rich man's table, but all he got were dogs licking his wounds. The contrast between the two men could not be more pronounced. From a purely earthly standpoint, the rich man was the clear victor, but Jesus was about to give them a bird's-eye view of the world. Despite the fact that the two men had almost nothing in common in life, they both experienced an event that all humans face, death. After death, however, each experienced a complete reversal of fortune. When the poor man died, the angels took him to Abraham's side or bosom, an idiom for heaven. But when the rich man died, he went to Hades to suffer torment. Many people believe there is no such thing as an afterlife. They argue that when people die, they simply cease to exist. God's angels are real, even though we may not see them or even know they are there. If they protect us now, can they also be trusted to safeguard our journey to heaven? Of course. In addition to escorting believers to heaven, angels perform God's work. Scripture confirms this. The Lord is God of all comfort, and he employs his heavenly army of angels to bring warnings of danger, tidings of joy, and messages of peace. The Bible calls them ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. Hebrews 1.14 Believing that God will send these angelic comforters to escort us out of this world and into the next should give great peace to our souls. The Bible says the Lord shall preserve your soul. He shall preserve your going out and your coming in. Psalms 121, 7-8, New King James Version. We must remember, however, that while God's angels provide comfort and protection, even at death, it is God who dispatches them, and we are not to worship them. The hosts of heaven stand at attention as we make our way from earth to glory, and Satan's attacks are no match for God's angels. So don't be afraid. God is for you. He has committed his angels to wage war in this conflict of the ages, and they will win the victory. The Apostle Paul has said in Colossians 2.15, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Victory over the flesh, the world, and the devil is ours now. The angels are here to help, and they are prepared for any emergency. Number 4. They worshipped God John reveals it to us in the book of Revelation. One of the basic descriptions of angels is this. They worship. In the book of Revelation, we learn about the activities angels perform in heaven. Angels in heaven are saturated with the adoration of God as a consequence of the Lamb's redemptive work. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, Christ, each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of fragrant incense, which are the prayers of the saints, God's people. And they sang a new song of glorious redemption, saying, 
Worthy and deserving are you to take the scroll and to break its seal. For you were slain, sacrificed, and with your blood you purchased people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of royal subjects and priests to our God, and they will reign on earth. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, and the voice of the living creatures and the elders. And they numbered myriads of myriads, and thousands of thousands, innumerable, saying in a loud voice, Worthy and deserving is the Lamb that was sacrificed to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every created thing that is in heaven or on earth or under the earth, in Hades, the realm of the dead, or on the sea, and everything that is in them, saying together, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, Christ, be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. In Revelations 4, 9-10, the angels prompted the elders into worship. The elders seem to be prompting the angels here. There is a wonderful cycle in heaven, with the angels and elders encouraging one another to praise more and more. Angels are worship leaders. There are images of angels on some altars in the great cathedrals, in this art, angels are portrayed offering incense, that is, the people's prayer. Praying, interceding, and worshipping are the responsibilities of angels. Angels are ministers in a story about God. Fascination with angel messengers can creep dangerously close to idolatry. Through the course of history, people have repeatedly fallen into the trap of worshipping angels rather than God. In point of fact, the Apostle Paul cautioned the church in Colossae against worshipping angels. The Apostle John needed to be told not to worship an angel when one appeared to him. Angels worship God. Angels that don't summon us to see God are not doing God's work. Rather, they are rebellious, bad angels, often called demons or evil spirits. Revelation 7, 11-12 New King James Version All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and their four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honour and power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. As the incredible multitude glorifies God, the others in heaven are compelled to merge their voices in praise. Around the throne, all created beings join in. As these other beings hear the adoration the great multitude brings to God, they see more clearly the power and wisdom and majesty of God. They can worship God all the more by witnessing the salvation he brought to the incredible multitude. David as a prophet also reveals what the angels in heaven in Psalms 148, 1-2. Psalms 148, 1-2. New King James Version Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. The company of faithful angels is like a great army. All His hosts. Other angelic beings fell because they would not properly honor God. Isaiah 14, 12-15 New King James Version How you are fallen from heaven. O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. exalted throne, surrounded by flying angels known as seraphim. Isaiah 6, 1-7, New King James Version In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. 
Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the doors were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. Each set of the seraphim's wings serve a different purpose. One set covers the face, denoting reverence and awe, and acts as protection from the radiance of God's glory. Another set is used for flying, assisting in their swift servitude, and the third set is used to cover the seraphim's feet, humbly concealing their unworthiness while in God's holy presence. God created seraphim as sinless creatures, but they are not to be confused with God. The seraphim, in fact, spend their days and nights worshipping God for his holiness. During this never-ending worship, they exclaim, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. The importance of the seraphim's close proximity to God, combined with their revelatory praise, cannot be overstated. When the seraphim say, The whole earth is full of his glory, they are giving a first-hand account of what they see from heaven's apex. The seraphim repeatedly proclaim God's supreme holiness and glory in Isaiah's version. In God's presence, the seraphim do not address God directly, but rather call out to one another, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. To be holy means to be distinguished and revered. This thrice invocation of the word holy to describe God's sacred nature appears only twice in the Bible, both times by angels to someone transported in a vision to God's throne. The other passage that contains this thrice invocation of God's holiness is found in Revelation 4.8, which also refers to six-winged angels surrounding God's heavenly throne and constantly proclaiming God's glory. In Revelation 4, John's vision of God's throne was similar to that of Isaiah. In reverence and awe of the Holy One, living creatures gathered around the throne cried out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Revelation 4.8 Revelation 4.8, New King James Version The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. The book of Hebrews also shows us this point. Hebrews 1.6 And when he again brings the firstborn, highest-ranking son into the world, he says, and all the angels of God are to worship him. Deuteronomy 32.43 lets us know that Jesus is superior as he is the object of divine worship. He is not an angelic worshipper. He is worshipped by the angels. However, he does not worship among them. Revelation 5 provides a peek at the angelic worship of Jesus. Deuteronomy 32.43, New King James Version. Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and render vengeance to his adversaries. He will provide atonement for his land and his people. Hebrews paints Jesus as the ultimate revelation of God, superior to the prophets or the angels. Jesus is the exact representation of God and has a position above everyone. Hebrews 1.3, New King James Version Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus displayed his strength in creation and salvation. He is the strongest leader, and even the angels follow him. Angels serve as a wonderful example for Christians to follow in terms of obeying the Lord and giving praise to his name. To tell the truth, we can join the worship of the angels in praising God and say with the psalmist, Psalm 150, 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Revelation 7.11, New King James Version. All the angels stood around the throne, 
and the elders and the four living creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. Praise and glory, and wisdom and thanks, and honour and power and strength, be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>